Greetings all, Last Outrider here, and welcome to part two of What is the Eye of Terror? We're going to go on with Fortress Cadia. Cadia stands upon the one reliable route to and from the Eye of Terror, and as such, is one of the most strategically vital worlds in the Imperium. There are other routes from the Eye, but none are as stable as the Cadian Gate, and no force of any size can venture forth from the Eye without first passing through it. The exact reasons for this calm area of space is uncertain, though many believe it is due to the presence of the famous Cadian pylons. These mysterious black monoliths dot the landscape of Cadia, and their origins have remained unexplained since Cadia was first settled by humans. Cadia itself is bleak, merciless, and a wind-blown planet where only the strongest survive to adulthood, and discipline is learned at the earliest age. Cold winds howl through the wide and sundered plains where the armies train with live ammunition, and every day not spent training is a day wasted. Every city, or caser, is a fortress, with the streets and buildings fashioned with such great cunning by the finest military architects. Every Cadian is taught the skills of the warrior as soon as they can walk, and they are much sought after by commanders throughout the galaxy. Such a planet breeds hardy and determined warriors and the Cadian regiments have a well-deserved reputation for both honor and fighting spirit. From the earliest age, Cadians are taught to field strip a weapon with their eyes shut, and tactical doctrine is taught before reading and writing. One soldier in ten is recruited into the interior guard, regardless of ability or achievements. And as a result, some of the most able soldiers spend their entire military service on Cadia. And the soldiers of the Cadian Planetary Defense Force are amongst the most effective and skilled fighting men in the Imperium. And that's all they have to say about Cadia. So, I am going to give you a lot of fluff this time. We're going to first start with a little part of the um, Dan Abnett's novel, Malleus, where he describes the pylons. The pylon had been looming in our windscreen for a while now, and Fischig swept us around it, almost kissing the black stone. The moaning song of the wind as it laced through the geometries of the pylon was now so loud I could hear it over the racing turbines of the speeder. The pylon was vast, half a kilometer high and a quarter square. The upper facing of the smooth black stone was machined with delicate craft to form holes and other round-edged orifices, no bigger than a man's head. It was through these slim 250-meter tubes that the wind moaned and howled. And the tubes weren't straight. They wove through the pylon like worm tunnels. Tech Magi had tried running tiny servitor probes through them to map their loops, but generally, the probes didn't come back. 
As we banked up higher for another pass, I could see the distant shape of the neighboring pylon across the moors, 60 kilometers away. 5,810 known pylons dot the surface of Cadia, not counting the 2,000 others that remain as partial ruins or buried relics. No two are identical in design. Each one rises to a precise half-kilometer height and is sunk a quarter kilometer into the ground. They predate mankind's arrival in the system, and their manner of manufacture is unknown. They are totally inert by any auspect's measure known to our race, but many believe their presence explains the quieting of the violent warp turrets that make the Cadian Gate the single, calm, navigable route to the Ocularis Terribus. And now, let's give a little snippet of what it's like for Cadian military training. The training I undertook upon my assignment to the 122nd Cadian Regiment was different from the normal activities involved in most regimental training I had thus far undergone in my career with the Imperial Commissariat. My initial surprise was the youth of my companions in the basic training program, all of whom were much, much younger than myself, the oldest being perhaps 14. I had heard that the Cadians began their training young, but, frankly, this astonished me. Though not as much as the level of competence displayed by such youngsters. At first, I was indignant at being forced to train with children, but I was soon to be disabused of this notion after witnessing their fitness and skill at arms. There were many specialized skills I needed to learn very quickly in order to operate with the Cadians, and the emphasis was very definitely on improving my stamina and overall strength. For too long I had ridden in the copula of the Chimera and the first days of training were harder than any battle I have ever fought in. But I was determined to uphold the honor of my position and refused to fail. In short, after three months, I could run, jump, and fight for prodigious distances, carrying a significant weight. Such activities required special determination, and failure is not an option for troopers in the Cadian regiments. As a newly assigned commissar, I had to perform doubly well to earn the respect of the soldiers. One of the biggest factors in the Cadian training program is learning to function as a team. Every challenge and exercise is undertaken in groups of at least squad size, and frequently larger. And it is crucial that the soldiers learn to operate effectively together. We learned how to move at pace as an entire group, known as speed marching in Kasserkin, and something of an art form. We also learned the difference between operating as an individual and as part of a squad, something I had not previously considered valuable. Many times during my first three months, I almost faltered and was forced to rely on my squad to get through a number of challenges. 
it soon became clear to me that it is a ritual amongst the Cadian troopers to try and outperform anyone they perceive as an outsider. And this insular nature was one of the many hurdles I had to overcome in my time with the 122nd. But say what you will about the Cadians, they are amongst the strongest and most thoroughly disciplined formations I have ever had the honor of serving with. Excerpted from the memoirs of Commissar Kotarian Verhek, assigned to the 122nd Cadian Regiment, 963rd year of the 41st millennium. Ha 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 ha. So until next time, we're going to go with ooh, the creeping death. What is that, you ask? I guess you'll find next time. Bye.